Shravanaya Pibal Biryo Nalabya Shrinvanto Pibavo Yang Navidjuhu Ascharyo Vakta Kushalo Shalabdha Ascharyo Gnata Kushalan Shishtaha Of that self, which is not available for the mere hearing to many, and which many do not understand even while hearing. The expounder is wonderful, and the receiver is wonderful. Wonderful is he who knows, under the instruction of an adept. Shankaracharya's Tika Yaha, that which, the self, that nalabhyaha, is not attainable. Bahubihi, by many, shravanaya api, even for the sake of hearing, yam, which, which self, bahavaha, many others, shrinvataha api, even while hearing, na vidjuhu, do not know. The unfortunate whose minds have not been purified may not know. Moreover, Asyavakta, its expounder, is Ashcharyaha, wonderful, comparable to a wonder, a rare one indeed among many. Similarly, even after hearing of the self, Kushalaha, one who is proficient, a rare one among many, becomes the Labdha, attainer. For Ashcharya Gnata, a wonderful man, a rare soul, becomes a knower. Kushala Nushishtaha, being instructed by a proficient teacher. Why so? Because. Anarena Varena Proktaisha. Suvigneyo Bahudha Chintyamanaha Ananya Prokte Gatiratranasti Aniyanya Tarkyaman Pramanat Taught by one who has become identified with it, there is no further cogitation with regard to it, for it is beyond argumentation being subtler even than the atomic quantity. Shankara's Tika Eshaha, this, the self about whom you ask me. When Proktaha, spoken of, Avarena Reina, Avarena Narena, by an inferior man, that is, by a man of worldly understanding, Nahi Suvigneyaha, is not certainly liable to be adequately understood, for it is bahudha, variously, such as it exists, it does not exist, it is the doer, it is not the doer. Chintyamanaha, deliberated on by disputants. How, again, is it well understood? This is being said. The self, ananya prokte, when spoken of by a non-different man, by the teacher who does not see duality, who has become identified with the Brahman that is to be revealed by him, atra, here, with regard to the self, naasti, there does not remain, gatihi, cogitation of various kinds as to whether it exists or not. For from the self is ruled out all thoughts involving doubt. Or, Ananya Prokte, when the Supreme Self that is non-different from and is one's very self is adequately taught, or taught as non-different from and as one's very self, Naastigatihi, there is no other comprehension apart from the realization, I am Brahman. Atra, in this self, 
as there is nothing else to be known, for the realization of the unity of the self is the culmination of all knowledge. Therefore, as there is no knowledgeable, therefore, as there is no knowable, there remains nothing to be known. Or, when the non-different self is spoken of, na asti atragatihi, there remains no transmigration. For emancipation, which is the result of that realization, follows immediately. Or, when the self is spoken of by a teacher who has become identified with the Brahman that he speaks of, there is na agatehi, no non-comprehension or non-realization. To this hearer, the realization, I am that self, does come, just as it did in the case of the teacher. This is the idea. Thus is the self well understood when it is taught to be non-different from the taught by a teacher who is well versed in the scriptures and established in a state of non-difference. Else the self becomes aniyan, more subtle, even anupramanat, than an atomic thing. For it is atarkyam, cannot be argued out, cannot be known through mere reasoning called up through one's own independent intellect, as distinguished from the intellect purified by the teachings of an adept. For if the self be regarded as an object of argumentation and postulated to be atomic in quantity, someone else may hold it to be subtler than that, while still another may hold it to be the subtlest. Thus, there is no finality about sophistry. Namaste. That's quite a purport, huh? This is where the Upanishad takes off. Everything up until now has been like the setup, the situation, establishing the context within which this conversation about the self can take place. Because it's very rare and wonderful that one is able to hear about the self and understand it properly. As discussed in the verse 7, many people don't even have the chance to hear about the self. I would guess most of the people on this planet don't have that opportunity. And of those who do, many of them, even hearing about it, won't get it. They won't understand. Why? Because their intellect has not been purified by performance of sadhana under the direction of a self-realized soul. But those who do get it, the expounder, the, the speaker is wonderful, the hearer is wonderful, and the one who realizes it is most wonderful of all. But in verse 8, then the reasons why this is not understood more, more widely because it's really very simple. Huh? I am Brahman, <laughs> period. The reasons that it's not understood are that it's spoken of by a person who is not qualified. Now we see, for example, online, almost all the teachers online are commercially motivated. There's money involved. You have to pay to take a course, or you have to pay to become a member of the channel and get the exclusive secret videos. <laughs> or uh, you have to give donations. They're always bugging you for donations because they have some big temple project or some big construction project and they have to construct and maintain all of these ashrams and all of these disciples and so on and so forth. So that person is not incentivized to give the final conclusion, clearly, right in the beginning. But that's what death is doing here. He's giving the last teaching, the ultimate teaching, first. Ham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. Period. That's the end of knowledge. 
If you get that, there's no more speculation, no more cogitation, no more a analyzing and trying to figure things out. See? But the problem is, most of the people who are speaking about this get it wrong because they're not realized. A good example is this first shloka uh, uses the word ascharyavat, wonderful, amazing. Huh? And it brings to mind a verse from Bhagavad Gita, ascharyavat pasyati kaschidenam, ascharyavat vadati tataiva chanyaha, ascharyavat chaina manya srinoti, Shrutvap yenang veda na chaiva kashchit. One sees the self as a wonder, and so also another speaks of him as a wonder, and as a wonder another hears of him, and though hearing, none understands him at all. <laughs> because the speaker is not realized. See, this is a perfect example. This verse in Bhagavad Gita 229. The subject is the word enan, which is the last word in the first line and the second word in the fourth line. Enam is a pronoun meaning this and indicating the subject under discussion in the general context. But most of the translators and commentators on Bhagavad Gita, I mean almost all of the examples I've seen, Take this word enam to mean the soul. Now, the soul is a problematic concept because it comes from dualistic religion, that God and the soul are both eternal and they never merge, they never become one. You have eternal individuality. Of course, they can't explain how you could be eternal in the past but let's overlook that for now <laughs> and, and still become conditioned by material existence. But anyway, enam, the antecedent or the word from which this pronoun gets its meaning, is found several verses back, and it's atman, the self, brahman. Atman does not mean the soul. The individual soul is never even mentioned, really, but rather the universal soul, the self, is the only thing that exists. We've already been over that in previous videos, so I'm not going to go into that here. But the individual is an illusion. It's the Atman, the universal soul, covered by Upadis. This is the theory of superimposition. So, they get it completely wrong, and they not only misled themselves, but they mislead others. This is the real problem. So, if you're teaching from a fundamentally monistic, non-dual scripture, but you twist the meaning of the words, to refer to a dualistic understanding or misunderstanding of reality. See, this is the difference between Vivartavada and Vishishtadvaitavada. Vivartavada says that Brahman never becomes transformed. It is simply overlaid by these projections, these superimpositions. So, Vishishta Dvaita Vada says Brahman does become transformed, that the Nirguna Brahman becomes transformed into Saguna Brahman, and that the existences in dualistic environment in the world are actually true and real, which doesn't add up in the long run because we can see they're all temporary. You know, like this nice house that I live in, a hundred years ago, it wasn't here. This was probably just a field, you know, somebody's garden. <laughs> and a hundred years from now, or a thousand years from now, 
this house won't be here. Who knows what will be here, but it won't be this. It'll be something else. Because nothing in this world lasts forever. But Brahman is eternal by definition. So anything which is not Brahman is going to be temporary and therefore unreal. This is the conclusion of all the Vedanta. So take it from this Upanishad that when you hear the truth of Brahman from someone who has realized it, then there's a chance to realize it yourself and come to the very end of knowledge, which is pure, potent self-realization. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namas Shivaya.